Jesus says, All authority, all power is given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And surely, he says, I will be with you always, to the very end of the age. God's word, as we already noted, on which we wish to ponder, is located in Luke chapter 24, the last chapter, the last verses of Luke's gospel. We'll just reread these selected verses. When he, that is Jesus, had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. This is the word of our great God. In Christ Jesus, our ascended Lord of glory, my dear friends. Quite a long time ago, there was a popular song on the radio that had this refrain in the song. I have troubles. I have worries. I have wounds to bind. And unfortunately, the song didn't offer any help, any solution to these issues with which, with which we all may be struggling. Instead, the only word of advice was she needed to walk it off. Of course, walking can provide it has its benefits. But the true solution to troubles, worries, and wounds to bind is not found in walking. Praise the Lord, you and I know which way to look. We look up to the Savior who reigns over all things. He has a solution for any of these things and everything, anything we may have to face in life. No, walking one's blues away does not do it, but walking with a Savior who ascended into heaven to reign over all things, he has the solution. So let's focus together on these words before us and note Jesus' ascension blessings. First of all, understanding <coughs> Secondly, help. And thirdly, joy. In Acts chapter 1, we have a, a more full account of Jesus' ascension into heaven. Interestingly, Luke wrote, of course, his gospel, but also the book of Acts. And really, only in his gospel do we have these added details in our text about the ascension. But in Acts chapter 1, we're told that he ascended on the top of Mount the Mount of Olives. Of course, Jerusalem is the, the, to the one direction from the Mount of Olives and Bethany to the other. So this is the modern day picture of what the disciples would see. Of course, they would not have seen the Muslim mosque, but rather that magnificent temple which King Herod had built for the Jewish people. And we read in Acts chapter 1 that the disciples still didn't get it. Forty days after Easter, they still don't get it. It says there in verse 6, So when they met together, they asked Jesus, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? They're still looking for a kingdom on this earth. They forgot Jesus' instructions. The kingdom of God is within us. Jesus reigns in the hearts of his people. So he first has to explain to them, he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So rather than wondering about when the kingdom is coming, he said to his disciples, you are my tools so that his kingdom can come into the hearts of others that Jesus may be known by more people. You are my witnesses. And if Jesus were here on this day, dear friends, and we would use Deerfield as the point of reference, he would say to you and me, you will be my witnesses in Deerfield, in all Dane and Jefferson County, and all of Wisconsin, and to the ends of the earth. We all, as God's people, have an ascension assignment. So, going back to our text, Jesus said to his disciples there, this is what I told you while I was still with you, 
Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms. These are the three major categories of the Old Testament Scriptures. Psalms is the heading of the group of writings called the writings, the Kithuvim, if you like, the Hebrew word for it. And this is what makes reading the Old Testament awesome, because you will see Jesus on many of those pages. So the New Testament, as we know, is the fulfillment of the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms. It's all powerful. Maybe you remember the reference to these books in Jesus' account of the rich man and Lazarus. Remember how the rich man had no use for the poor man, Lazarus? And Lazarus died. But angels escorted him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died. Very next sentence in the Bible, he lifts up his eyes in hell. And now the rich man is a beggar. Imagine begging for one drop of water. How horrible it is in hell. We want anybody to go there. But now he's concerned. He has five brothers. Please, Abraham, send Lazarus back from the dead. Warn my five brothers so that they don't come to this place of torment. Remember Abraham's answer? They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham. If, if someone comes back from the dead, they will repent. And the eye-opening answer, Abraham says, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't believe, they won't repent, even if somebody comes back from the dead. How hard people's hearts can be. And what a miracle when we believe those scriptures that point us to Jesus. We acknowledge with the Apostle Paul, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. So, as we all know, we can't change people. Only God can. And the tool he uses is the word of God. So, then, Jesus opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. They didn't get it yet. They're growing in their understanding. Jesus helps them to understand a little bit more here at this point, according to Luke's gospel. And he told them, this is what is written. He's summarizing the Old Testament scriptures now. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Sounds just like the Apostles' Creed, or the Nicene Creed that we just said together, doesn't it? <clears throat> so he summarizes the Old Testament, Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. And then he says, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. we deal with our troubles, our worries, and should we have them, wounds that are in need of binding? Do we forget we have a Savior who loves us so much and is in charge of everything in the universe and in our lives? We tend to forget all of us. We tend to focus on our troubles when we have them, right? And forget Jesus' words just before he ascended into heaven. All authority, all power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So he has the power to help us with our trials. He has the power to keep his promise. All things work together for good to those that love God. I have worries. Again, do we forget the wonderful ascension blessing, his promise, that at, right at the end of Matthew's gospel. And surely, I am with you always. To the very end of the age, the greatest one in the universe, by our side, every single one of us. So we don't have to worry. Yes, we may have wounds to find. And are we asking the question like Jeremiah asked back in chapter 8 of his book? Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no salve to heal a heart that may be broken? Salve to heal a conscience that may trouble us to no end. Salve that could heal our physical wounds. Of course, the answer is yes. There is a bomb in Gilead. There is the bomb to heal our wounds, whatever they may be. It's found at the cross. And the 
picture of that Bob of Gilead to which Jeremiah referred is the forgiveness of our sins. So the greatest healing of all found there where here our sins made us worthy of nothing but God's wrath and punishment. But remember, as Jesus said to his disciples, repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. Remember how far we are from Jerusalem here in our neck of the woods? 6,000 miles. God has kept his promise. His people have been carrying out the message of repentance as we already expressed together in our confession of sins. We confess our sins. Instead of making excuses for them, we confess our sins. And we receive the assurance that because our Savior came, laid down his life for us on that cross and rose triumphant from the grave, sins are gone. What a wonderful bond of Gilead we have to heal sin-sick souls. Jesus' ascension blessings. What great blessings we have. Understanding as the Savior continues to open up our understanding of the wonders and the blessings in the scriptures. And he promises help. Yes, his command. You are witnesses of these things. He said to his disciples of old, and he says to you and me and all his believers today. And we might wonder, well, what do I say? Well, dear friends, a picture's worth a thousand words. How about this one? So simple. Truths you and I have treasured, many of us, for our whole lives long, huh? The arrow down. He came down to be our Savior, left glory behind to be true man, just to suffer on a cross and die. And then, here's the empty tomb, the greatest victory ever won. He conquered sin, death, and the devil. The tomb is empty. It's proof of it. There's the arrow up. He ascended into heaven. Oh, it's coming back again. And when he comes back again, it will not be to save the world. It will be to judge the world. And pity anyone who faces Judgment Day without Jesus. You and I are ready with a living faith in that living Savior. So if you remember these five symbols, you can write it out and help somebody who doesn't know what the Savior is all about. So, it's so simple, isn't it? Simple enough for a child to understand, profound enough that the smartest one in the world can ponder the scriptures to his dying day and never know all of it. They're still all learning. But the greatest help is right here, Jesus talks about. I am going to send you what my Father has promised. <coughs> But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So the Father's promise, the Holy Spirit. And notice what the Holy Spirit provides. Provides us with our faith and our Savior clothes us in white in the eyes of our holy God. Interesting expression, isn't it? Be clothed with power. Next Sunday we'll review that power of Pentecost. How the disciples trembling with fright in the upper room on the first Easter are, the very, are speaking to the very same people who condemned Jesus to death on Pentecost Sunday. So you and I, we can be clothed with power too. Jesus explains how in John 6 verse 63. He says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. Here's our source of power from the Holy Spirit. Does it warm your heart every time you say the Nicene Creed and say about the Holy Spirit? It has recorded the scriptures for us. What a tool for you and me to help us with anything with which we may be struggling and with our high calling to be Jesus' witnesses. <clears throat> I, I thought of the incident that took place. Maybe some of you have heard this already. But uh, as you, most of you and not all of you realize, it's been four years ago, I had that heart attack and stroke. Six weeks after it happened, I'm seeing the cardiologist, and this doctor gets in my face and he says, you are really, really lucky. So many people with a stroke have, are handicapped for life. We all realize that. How many people do we know and have visited who are paralyzed on one side, can't do much with being paralyzed on one side. And he's going to walk out. I was tempted to just be quiet. <laughs> I said a quick prayer. 
And the Lord helped me. I said, say, doctor. So I turned around. And I said, just so you know, it is not luck. It is the hand of the Lord. And he laughed and went on his way. But at least we got the record straight. And so it's, <laughs> so it's a, as true as we see on this particular matter. I am not lucky. I am blessed, I hope. All of us say that when great things happen in our lives. And if the word lucky is in our vocabulary, vocabulary, please on your way home, roll down your window, throw it out, and always give credit to a good Lord. He's the one who blesses us and takes care of us. So we go on. Jesus' ascension blessings, understanding, being able to grasp the scriptures, realizing Jesus is the heart of the scriptures, and we don't get it. Praise the Lord, but we do get it. And get to you that we have help from our God, the Holy Spirit. Helps us in the greatest way. And what a blessing, he also gives us joy. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was still blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Isn't that awesome? Can you imagine standing there on the top of the Mount of Olives? And watching Jesus go up, and I assume his hands were lifted up in blessing all the way until the cloud hid him from their sight. And then the angels in Acts chapter 1 tell us that they said, the same way you saw him go into heaven, he will return. So I do expect that when Jesus returns for his people, his hands will be lifted up in blessing. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising the Lord. Isn't it interesting? Way back in Luke chapter 1, it begins, that gospel begins with worship. Zechariah is in the temple when the angel appears to announce the miraculous birth of John the Baptist. And Luke's gospel concludes with worship. Realize how great our God is, how blessed we are to know Him, to love Him. That's where we want to be too, and we get to have a taste of heaven. See? But we return with great joy when our God lifts us up with the power of His Word, with the joy we can express through our hymns, and, and of course with the strength He gives through sacrament and the Word of God. And of course we remember what He ascended into heaven to do, like He told the disciples back in John 14. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So when we leave this world behind, there's going to be a spot, a special place, for every single one of us who believe and are baptized. And, like we're reminded in 1 Timothy, there's one God and one mediator, one go between between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So he's there interceding for us. Even if we can't think of what to pray, he's praying for us, and we pray in his name that our prayers, we can be sure, are always heard. And, of course, he who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe so he can keep his promise. Surely I will be with you always to the end of the age. Dear friends, I hope we all have our spiritual eyes open so that we see the reigning of our Savior over the nations, as we heard in the scripture readings, as well as over everything in our lives. Maybe you remember this article if you, got, if you succeeded in reading the Forward in Christ magazine for last month. A man, I can't say his name, but he's from Ethiopia, and uh, heading up a new Lutheran church body that is faithful to the Word of God. And he came to our country, to our Sunni convention in 2017, as we declared fellowship with his sister synod in Ethiopia, way over there, uh, next to Egypt. At, and while at the convention, as Jesus is reigning over all things, he hears about a special group of people in our church body called Special Ministries, there to reach out to special needs of various groups of people. And one of those special groups in Special Ministries is the vision the mission to the visually handicapped, help for the blind, help for those who are legally blind. And he had a heart for the blind.
blind people in Ethiopia. There, with those handicaps, they're a forgotten people. But through being at our city convention, he found out some tools. He happened to cross paths with the pastor in charge, Pastor Greg Beringer. And he's got the tools now. His hope is, as he reaches out to the blind people, that also he'll be able to reach out to their friends and relatives too. And he had a heart for the people in prison. So found out about the prison ministry, excellent materials to share with those behind bars so they can make good use of that time to learn more about Jesus and the Word of God. And now, another group in our synod is translating the wonderful materials we have in English into two different languages that are used in Ethiopia. See how Jesus reigns? Here we thought this would be just a Confession of faith together. Turns out, God is going to bless this man's efforts. Only God knows how many more people will be added to the family of our Lord through these efforts. Here's a picture of that learned man, that the theologian who does operate a seminary there in Ethiopia as well. And of course, they're learning Braille in the languages of, of their people and they're concerned about the people behind bars. I had the privilege of of uh, having the Bible study there at the county jail, Jefferson County Jail yesterday. Twelve men came. It's pretty awesome. I was impressed. And one of those young men raises his hand, he says, when, he, when I shared with him where I get to serve the Lord here at Emmanuel, I have some relatives moving to Deerfield. Let me know your address. Maybe you can help them get, get attached to the church. Isn't that something? You'd never dream you'd be, be able to do a mission work like that. Usually you think you're just planting. The seed. Who knows? Maybe the Lord will give us a heart. Jesus reigns. My friends, what a blessing. Jesus has ascension blessings for you and for me. Great gifts. Understanding the scriptures. Great help. The power of the Holy Spirit to help us with no matter what we're facing. Trouble, worries, wounds that need to be bound and replace it all with joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Peace of God, which is beyond our dreams, shall guard and keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.